can see who's on here, so welcome. And this is Leanne Riley's Real Estate Investing Made Simple Club meeting. And I interview experts and leaders in the real estate investing world. So hi, everybody. And I'm Leanne Riley. I'm a real estate coach and a broker. <coughs> Help people get started or scale a portfolio without confusion or fear with my proven profit formula coaching program. And I built a $14 million portfolio in residential, multifamily, condo development, commercial, and vacation properties. And I lead the Encore investment team of realtors here in the Twin Cities. We go from Rochester to St. Cloud and anywhere in between. And I want to ask you to check out my YouTube channel. Actually, this recording will go over there. And it's just called Leanne Riley Real Estate. And be sure and subscribe when you're over there. There is a ton of experts on there that I've interviewed. And you can learn a lot, believe me. So remember to stay on right after the meeting today because we actually do some networking and bring you on. And if we can talk about deals or ask Dean and Renee questions, that type of thing. So remember to stay on because really the name of the game is networking in real estate investing. And when I tell how we all met, networking. So um, it's a good idea to meet other investors, even though we're on Zoom we can still do it. So uh, today's topic is living on the real estate passive income. And first I want to share, I'm wearing a cowboy hat because Dean and Renee are in Nashville, Tennessee for the Country <laughs> Music Awards. Well, they just happen to be there at the same time. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I love country music. So that's something you don't know about me. And I'm getting ready for the award ceremony tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to get in the spirit. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So today I'm interviewing Minnesota couple. It's Dean and Renee here. And they started investing in real estate in the Twin Cities market in 2012 with two fourplexes. And they grew their portfolio to over 50 units of multifamily housing. And we're going to chat about how did they do it? Okay, so now here's the cool thing. They're semi-retired and living on the passive income. And isn't that where we're all trying to get, you guys? And look at them. They're there. And <laughs> when they... When we were lining this up and they said, oh, by the way, we're going to be in Nashville. I said, that's perfect because they have that ability to travel whenever they want. They have that ability to be with their family because you're with some family there. All mm -hmm. of that. That's what we all get. And travel is these guys' passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really glad you could join us today. And everyone is really eager. We got a lot of people on here because they want to know, how did you get to over 50 units? So we're going to start with, what's the one big thing that got you there? Focus. I'd say <laughs> focus on, on growing our portfolio. So we, we, you know, the whole idea was we want to start buying we wanted to build them, you know, which I know we'll talk about as we go, but we wanted to build that portfolio. We wanted to do it fast and we wanted to do it with, with passive income in mind, your cash flow in mind. You know, yeah, so it's really the, it's the focus and, and doing things. I mean, we didn't spend any of the money along the way, you know, so any of our profits just went into the next building or the next deal. Yep. And you guys, you, you know, you are a great example of focus. And I say this because, you know, I worked with them all along the way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you're right, you you're very focused people, both of you, and you did this together. Yeah. You know, this that was the other big thing. This That's is something big, we could do together. Yeah, it was a big team thing. It can really mm -hmm. help the marriage, or it can be, you know, challenging <laughs> at times. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell, right? But you That's know, right. it's, it's a common goal that you both shared from the moment I met you. This is our ticket and mm -hmm. we're going to go on it. Yeah. Okay. I love that. What a great thing. The big focus. So I want to tell the story I always do of how we met. 
Well, mm-hmm. they found me from this same real estate investing club that here I am on today. That was 2012, it t- over 10 years ago. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they wanted a private strategy session. I still do that. And I remember, I remember where we met, the muddy something or other. I remember yep. Dean had a book in his hand when when they arrived. And it was how to make money in building apartments, you know, getting yep. a, yeah. a, that multifamily strategy. And I just thought to myself, hey, these guys are prepared and ready. And you know what? They were smart and they were ready. And that is the key, being ready. They were ready and they were focused and they're like, okay, let's go, right? And I I helped them launch as their coach and their realtor. Mm -hmm. So um, do you guys remember the meeting? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) I remember the book. We still have it. (laughs) I know it. I love that book. So tell us about the big plunge that got you started, those two fourplexes, the first ones. Yeah. Yep. So when when we first started doing this, as you mentioned, you know, we we met in the meetup groups and we we started actually we started researching, if you will, back yeah. in 2011. So it was about the halfway through the year, you know, so June, July is kind of in that time frame. And uh, we Kind of did our, our studying and due diligence, if you will, just to make sure we understood the you know the verbiage and we understood how to value buildings and how to how to uh, analyze deals and all that fun stuff. And uh, the idea was that we wanted to buy a fourplex. You know that was what we wanted first. And the thinking was is that if one tenant leaves and then we have enough cash flow in the in the deal that we're not going backwards. So that was really our our thinking at the time. And uh, if you remember at the time, there's no, we couldn't find fourplexes. No, nobody was selling anything, uh, or at least that, that made sense. So we started looking at some single family homes as an idea, and uh, those just weren't making sense. You know, we looked at a few, and uh, we, we then had this fourplex, well, two fourplexes that popped up. Leanne. Yeah, from you, Leanne. <laughs> uh, well, and, you know what? I remember they were off market. Yep. Yes, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Leanne called, pulled some strings and found us two, yeah. <laughs> not just one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, that took a little bit of uh, a little creativity on our side to say, okay, how are we prepared for, to purchase one? Yeah. Yeah. So how do we come up with the money and the financing, which we did and we grabbed them and, the, and that was in 2012. So in fact, we closed on them in January of 2012. Wow. And they, yeah. they were in Spring Lake Park, you know, yeah. side by side, kind of fenced off alone from one yeah. seller. And that's why I know they were looking for one, but it was like, woo, this is irresistible. These two together. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yep. I yep. know, you know, I'm sure you lost some sleep there, right there at the beginning. Like, oh my gosh, we're going to oh, do two of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And now we've never invested to real estate we didn't yeah it's all new yeah Yeah. well you owned your home but that was it yeah yeah Yeah. that was it yeah yeah so we didn't really know what to expect in that regard but yeah but you i love what dean said you knew the numbers you had done enough Mm -hmm. study and just so you know dean's background he's an engineer Mm -hmm. you know he understands analyzing things Mm mm-hmm but what's great about him, he doesn't overanalyze. He figured out, you know, how to do it, adjusted the formula to what would work for them. And you stuck yeah. with that all the way through the yeah. game, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Anything we looked at, we ran right through our sister, the number system program that we have, he made and yeah. everything yeah. was... You yep. took the simplified spreadsheet and you kept adding your own personal this, that as you grew is what I noticed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You exactly. know, what was happening in your mindset to get you going that big right out of the gate? What what was there? Because some people are so scared. They, they start with the little piece and you yeah. kind of went big. Yeah, I, I well, I think. Probably the biggest thing is knowing that the numbers looked right, kind of set us at ease. You know, so it, we felt like it was it was a risk, but it was a calculated risk. 
you know, so we just said, you know, it's, if you're going to do it, just do it, you know, and if it doesn't work, okay, well then we'll figure it out. We'll figure out what to do after that. But, but, you know, really when we looked at it, the risk to us was not so much that it was eight units as much as how much money we're putting into it. You know, that of course was a little bit nerve wracking and what keeps you up at night, you know, but, but doing the rest of the stuff, we said, okay, well, whether we do property management on, on a four unit or an eight unit, it's essentially the same, you know, which turned out it was, you know, so, it, so it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, the opportunity was there. You mentioned earlier, you got to be ready for the opportunity. I think we were ready. You know, we, we had fourplex already in our mind, you know, so two fourplexes side by side sharing utility, you know, sharing the sum yeah. of the expenses. It worked. Yeah, it worked. So let's just do it. Okay. And, um, I that is great, but y there was two things: the ready, the focus, yep. and he knew the numbers. Those yep. three things. It was like let's let's dive off the diving board here. We can do this yep. together. Yes. Yes. And yeah, we both were the, fully on board, so we knew. Yeah, that's. I always ask people, "Are you both in the canoe?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you have to gotta be. both be paddling together. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things I want to make sure our people know is that, you know, Dean, you you're you were working full time all through this building process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Renee, you were managing and property managing these properties from the mm -hmm. beginning to, you know, still, still. ours. Mm -hmm. Still now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you were brand new at that. I remember at the beginning. Yeah. And it, like, yeah. well, yikes, this is kind of a big learning curve, but, you know, you mastered that, mm -hmm. yeah. managing yeah. those properties, and that saved a lot of money, I'm sure. So, you know, oh, yes. what else would be your special abilities around real estate investing that brought you guys success? You both had a skill and you went together with that. Yeah, we pull, both pulled our strengths together, and he has sets and I have some and we just kind of stayed out stayed out of each other's way I do you maybe say like he was he's really good with numbers and he can figure out all the keeping us on track the he does all that and I just I handle all the front office, front office stuff with dealing with the tenants and the applications and vendors and I do all that portion of it. Yep. And problems. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> okay. And tell us your philosophy on sweat equity, because I know too, you guys did the sweat equity route. Mm -hmm. yes. So what, yes. What does that mean to you? What did you guys do? Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, you name it, we did it. Yeah. So so we, you know, any of I mean, all of our buildings that we purchased or most of them, I should say, were, were rehab, you know, a little distressed. Yeah, distressed buildings. So they're usually mismanaged. Uh, most of the time they didn't have. Okay. A lot of work. In other cases, is simple work. Yep. So, so you know, so to us, uh, it just was a matter of, 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 uh, I don't know, you know, putting the time into our own stuff, right? I mean, we all spend time. It's either, either we're spending time helping or building somebody else. We said, let's just spend the time building us. And, yep. and that is really where sweat equity came in. Yeah, it is. And I know, you know, like we're talking, you know, they did the bathroom repair or the, you know, and I'm not just saying only Dean, Dean and Renee. Oh, yeah. Both they of us. Yeah. We're over there together using whatever skill they each had <laughs> to get the project done, right? Yes, yep. Mm -hmm. And lots of weekends, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, nights and weekends, because Dean was working full-time. Yep. Right. I was property managing, you know, mostly by day, but yeah. Um, yeah, we were in there painting and rehabbing apartments and, yeah, all the sweat equity. The only thing I think we don't do is put carpet down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you probably tried it once and then <laughs> said, you're not doing that yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Not doing that. <laughs> so, you know, would you say is is that 
was it equal to like a full-time job between the two of you just for that extra? Okay. It was. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Yeah. I like people to know what? that because you can build really fast like they did, but it didn't just happen with them hiring everybody because the money wouldn't have went as far, right? Right. Exactly. Right. And that's yep. why we did what we did. We knew it was, you know, we just take the time, I mean, you sacrifice the time, but you get it done faster. Yep. Yeah, and cheaper when you do yeah. it yourself. Yeah. yeah. I don't mean I don't mean the work gets done faster. I mean our end goal yeah, went end a little goal. faster because you're just rolling that money over. Yeah. Yeah. As quick yeah, you, as possible. Exactly. Yeah, because if you look at a project, you know, I'm sure we could hire somebody and maybe they finish the apartment in a month and it takes us two months. You know, but the difference is, is how much money we're giving them. So we're saving all that money and that's the sweat equity that you mentioned. So now that takes it to where our, our next investment, the money for that next investment is growing that much faster. Right. You know, because so, so sure, it, you know, we lost a month in the development, but we're gaining months, you know, on, on the cash flow. Yep. And what tools since dean you're a systems man which is critical yeah. in real estate too you guys this is a skill it's important what tools did you use to keep track of all these properties now you're growing and growing you know you buy i, I don't know how many a year sometimes you know 10 units or something in a year and right. as it grew older it was even more units yeah and um you know what did you use what's what's our tools or tips as far as keeping track of all that yeah so so really we used quickbooks for for most of the tracking expenses you know incoming revenues and all that fun stuff and then uh the excel you know really for everything else so so you know if you you know want to monitor rent rolls or or you know what's happening to the entire portfolio i mean all of that stuff we would use really those two tools Yep. They are pretty, it's all right there in those two tools, really. It really is. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then believe it or not, we use sticky notes. So, so it's, yeah. So, so what I, do you I mean? Kinda, yeah, those yeah. exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I've got a lot of project management in my background, you know, from, from my nine to five work. So we would take some of those ideas and use them on what we're doing on real estate. So, so our, our weekly stuff, our bi-weekly stuff, we would track what we're doing and, and all of our capital projects, you know, for the different buildings we'd capture on sticky notes. Well, and I remember you had boards, you know, yeah. in your office where you, you, you're visual people and you could move those stickies around. So yep. you always knew here's the goal. Yep. You yep. write it down. You don't have to keep it in your head all the time. And then you just go to the board. You look, okay, yeah, that's due today. That's, this is going to be this week. You can weekly project plan and keep your keep your stuff moving. Yep. Keep your projects moving. Exactly. And just so you folks know, they didn't work every single weekend. They still spent time with yeah. family. They still traveled and they oh, yeah. still had a life. But yep. they were definitely on task. Yep. Okay. Uh, that was one of our rules when we started this is that travel wouldn't suffer. Okay. Yeah, so we, yeah, we said yeah. we still needed to do our trips during the year. You know, during yeah, the year. We still took two, at least two to three trips a year. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. our, our main goal. <laughs> yeah. And does self managing your properties really save you money? Yes. yes. <laughs> a lot yeah. of money, doesn't it? Lots of money. Yeah. It really does. You know, yep. the one thing I love about self-managing, because I managed 100 units in the inner city, was I got to use my own intuition when I'd meet those people, you know, to help make a decision of whether they would be yep. an okay tenant or not. Yep. Right. And if somebody else, that. you don't have that with a property manager. You have a piece yeah, of paper I, on a person. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you keep your like self-managing your you're keeping your eye on your own building because I mean, you're the one that's going to have your best interests at heart. So you're you know, we're at the buildings a lot. We're walking around where I'm showing apartments. I'm 
maybe cleaning a hallway. Yeah. So I'm just keeping my eyes on things. I still clean the hallways. <laughs> well, and like you say, you arrived 10 minutes before the prospective tenant and you're like, oh my God, they left a mess on the back step and you quick clean it up like a realtor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, great point there, Renee, being present at the building and they don't always know when you're going to show up because they don't know you're showing a unit, but that just shows you care about the property. Yep. Right. Yep. Might be picking up a piece of litter in your yard or whatever, and but you're just walk around and they see you around and then they know you're, you're you know, we're keeping things up. Mm -hmm. We want to know things are going awry somewhere. Yep. Yeah. And okay, and what's your biggest tip then, Renee? Because you, you, you know, on finding great tenants. Um, from day one, we've had criteria, and we really don't vary from that. It's it's a set criteria that has worked for us. Um, it's all within fair housing, and we just stick with it. And then that way, when I'm making or people are making calls or I'm call, talking with prospective tenants, everything is the same. And we just don't bury, you know, you're gonna get a lot of stories out there that let me just tell you this because it's so different than anybody else. Well, it's not, but um, <laughs> you just stick with your criteria that is set and it won't fail. You know, and that's a great idea for anyone who owns multifamily. It's very, you know, I owned some buildings. I remember they were all three bedrooms and I think there was 12 in one building. Now, imagine all the children you have that are going to be playing in the parking lot. If I didn't have a specific criteria, you can you can end up with wars between tenants. Mm -hmm. um, and by I love that you drew a line, you knew exactly what your criteria was, and it is safe. For, it is safe with fair housing. Then you have a certain yeah. criteria. Everyone meets it or doesn't, and yeah. it makes it easier to make the decision. It's not all just oh that story was so good, or I feel sorry for the person. That as a landlord is a caution. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah. That's yeah, and you can still Stick be a it. nice person and have a boundary line. Yeah, mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, and I like what Dean said. You know, the main goal that I teach people in my proven profit formula is about cash flow because I agree with you, and we always have agreed on this, that if there's cash flow, you can figure out whatever happens. If there's no yep. cash flow and it starts draining your bank account, it's kind of hard to figure out. Yep. So if you buy, maybe it's kind of just even up when you buy it, but you know, when you add that, whatever value you're going to add and you get the rents to the, where they should be, now you have plenty of cash flow. Yep. So, um, you know, if that's the main goal was cash flow, and then ultimately this passive income stream, you've done that. So what was yep. your top three lessons? You did it. You did it. It it didn't take that long or did it take no. longer than you thought? No, I think it took about how long we had in mind. I mean, we didn't know for sure. And of course, the goals that we had set as to what was the target when we started this versus once we were in four or five years changed. Sure. Okay. And, and and changed only because, you know, we, we had a better feel for, you know, what was you know, what was really happening, what would it take to grow? You know, it didn't take as much as what we initially anticipated, but we're also both very conservative, you know, when we look at things. Um, you know, so I, yeah, I think as far as the length of time, yeah, it's probably about right, you know, 10 years. You know, and, and as far as the question, top three things, um, I, I'd say that the, really the focus on this whole thing is what can we do to grow as fast as we possibly can? And, and, you know, I know we've, Leanne, we've talked many, many times about velocity of money. This was our mindset since yes. day one, right? And, and the idea was, is that buy the building, uh, obviously get it running, you know, to its best ability, you know, get the right tenants in there, get the cash flow going. And then we never spent the cash flow. It, it would go, if you will, into the bank account, 
and we started looking for the next deal. And, and once we had enough money in the bank account, we'd go grab another building and, and start over. You know, and, and uh, uh, I think once we got to a point where we, where we had enough cash flow, then we're just buying more and more and faster and faster. Yeah, yeah, and quicker, and quicker at the rehab too, even as it yep. went along. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. 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 You just get better. You know, you get better at knowing what to do, how to do it. You know, every rehab that we did, you know, we treated the same as always keep the paint colors the same. I mean, just really simple things, but make it fast, you know, and, and you know, a tenant doesn't know. I mean, it, it, you know, whether every unit looks the same or not, they're only moving into one, you know, so, <laughs> so, you know, that was kind of our mindset is that we yeah. just said, just do this as quick as we can we do i mean we would do redo like i said we buy distressed buildings but then as people would move out then we'd rehab that apartment yep. to updated our updated colors with same colors same color carpets kind of just to make it easier so if we have to go in and do touch-ups for turns everything's yep. the same color yep. i remember when we bought that building over in uh Lexington, I think it is. Oh, a yeah. fourplex. And you know, it was a short sale or a for estate thing, I think. Somebody died. Yeah, he yeah. passed we away. We were buying it from a bank. I remember yeah. that. And I mean, I think we made an offer and then we didn't win. Yeah, you know, right. somebody else mm -hmm. did, but then it fell apart and yeah. they came back to us and we actually got it cheaper than the original offer. And I don't it was like a miracle. Yeah, but, we said, oh, we'll buy it, but it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got it. Yeah. And that was kind of a big rehab for you at the time. That one was that more, was. I remember that. And that was big. That was big. It was yep. big. That took a lot of time. That was four apartments, but that was fully redoing most everything, even windows and yeah. most doors were replaced. Yeah. Of course, patching holes and yeah. And I remember what the cool thing is, you still own that one, don't you? We, we do. do. It's yeah. a little gem. <laughs> <laughs> it was a gem, that one. So, yeah. you know, but I remember that was a stretch, you know, at the time that was like, whoa, that's over yeah. there. But once you did that one, you did other stretches and they weren't as bad, you know, yeah. like yeah. because you had made it through that one. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I th what I noticed watching you grow is it's a stacking sort of a thing. Your skills get better and better and better. And sure, you had the bad tenants and maybe you had to do some evictions, but you just yep. get better and better and better at it, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, you know, how many roughly per year did you get to get to the 50? Or so you had eight to start with out of the gate. Yep. Well, we had eight to start, but then we waited a couple of years because one, we probably were out of money, but yep. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we're also, right. we're like, well, we don't know. Let's make sure this is what we want to do. If we like it, how it goes, and yep. so before the two years was up, we we were back. Yeah, let's let's keep going here. Yep. And then yeah. that's when we bought those two buildings that that same year. Yep. Yeah, so we bought the six-unit four-unit. Oh, the six-unit four-unit that same, yeah. the next time you were ready to buy. Yep. That was the same year. Yeah, in fact, it, so when the four-unit fell through, you remember we started, we got back into the market to look, and that's when the six-unit, we found that. Oh. And had that under contract, and that's when the four-unit popped back on the market. Uh-oh, and now you're like, yeah. oh, we're stretching yeah. the funds again. Yeah, yeah exactly. We'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> but we stretched. We got creative. That's when we grabbed a commercial loan instead, so it was less money down. And, you know, so we, we got right. a little creative again. That's a great story, too. You know, there's a time when you get residential loans, and anybody who I know who's growing, you do move over to the commercial side in some of the lending. Yep. You definitely do. I remember one other good financing strategy we did was there's some contract for deeds in there, too. There are. Yep. Yep. And in fact, we still own a couple of those. Yeah, I know. There are good yep, ones, yep. too. Yep. So, you know, what is the worst thing that happened, and how did you solve it? Yeah, so I don't know if there's a worst. I mean, there, it's there's something. yeah, there's always something. <laughs> always something. Yeah, <laughs> not always the worst. But. No, we. I mean, we've we've uh, 
Well, we were talking about this earlier. So I, I think the one that popped into our mind is that we had a, a building flood due to rain in the winter. So if you if, uh, maybe, I it think was, this is five years ago or so. Yeah, we were supposed to go out of town for the weekend to a friend's place and yeah. it started sleet and rain and our building got flooded into apartments in yeah. the lower units. Yeah, because all the rain was, you know, there's snow banks. So the rain didn't have anywhere to go except for the stoop of the building. And it was going into the apartment. So we had to get down there and stop it. And yeah, we water. were shop backing and weekend was ruined. Yeah. <laughs> so that one was exciting. <laughs> yeah, but you figured it out, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. you just, yeah. There's you, another weekend we can go. That's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it was an experience. But we've had other issues. You know, there, there's always something that pops up. You know, be it plumbing issues or tenant issues or whatever it may be. And you know, so we we've gone through the. You know, there's always there's always a bad tenant that you have to deal with. There's always a bad plumbing. You know, there's something happens. And you know, you, know, you, figure you, guys, it out. you guys are level headed, and that certainly helps. Just okay. How are we going to solve it? And then start calling people or whatever it takes. Yeah, right. it, there's been, never been something that's happened so catastrophic that we can't just sit down, figure it out, yeah. figure out who to call. Yeah. It's usually what it comes down to, right? It's something new. You just take a deep breath and say, okay, you know, we'll figure it out. Well, we yeah. were, well, one time we were in Puerto Vallarta walking the beach and I got a, phone call that somebody somebody's child had flushed a deodorant stick down the toilet and it was <laughs> flooding. <laughs> yeah. And luckily you had a team uh, back on the ground. It was one more phone call and yeah. Yep, that's just walking yeah. on the beach, right? Yeah. yeah yep. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Okay. And then, you know, did you ever run into financing issues? Or did it always like sort of work out? No, there's always seemed to be little challenges with things. You know, the biggest, of course, was on the two, when the two fourplexes came up to so our first purchase. You know, we weren't ready for two, we were ready for one. You know, so we had to get extremely creative and go after anything that we could take a loan out on. Yeah, um, talk about sleep sleepless nights. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we, we leaned against our house and 401ks and anything <laughs> else that, anybody would lean money against <laughs> uh, so we had that and then uh well when the two buildings so the four plaques we mentioned we had to jump over to to commercial loans you know on on just a fourplex um you know and again that was just due to money down so we didn't have enough cash to come up with for both deals um so what i'm uh, hearing is you were willing to be creative and go out there just a little bit because you knew the numbers worked we just have to get it and then Definitely. we can right side the rest of it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. In fact, you know, I'd even say, you know, you asked on the tips, that would be a big one is, is work with a bank and have your stuff put together. So there's, there's a oh, yeah. like, think personal financial statement, you know, so when we started working with the, the latest bank that we've now been working with for a handful of years, we went into them everything listed out any you know assets that we have liabilities we have i mean a balance sheet for ourselves if you will and told them exactly what our strategy is what we're looking to do what we wanted to do you know that we're looking for a bank that was going to work with us and uh they they ended up helping us finance one of the buildings where debt service if you remember with the current rates current rents the debt service was barely above a one and they they gave us a loan on it you know, just knowing that we are going to get in there and get the, the everything running better, you know, so having that, it's very helpful. I love that story because you are so correct. Commercial lenders will look more, they actually do use who you are as a person and your track record. Like they, they looked at how you built that. They had all those numbers. They could see yep. that you buy and improve things and right side it. So yep. they were, they're willing to go tighter and nor big banks can't do that. Just so you know, no. folks listening, but yeah. small community banks, they have a little leeway on those yeah. kind of things. And that helps exactly. having a great yeah. relationship and it's your presentation to the bank yeah. too. 
That's the big thing. I, I think that at the end of the day, yeah, you know, and they've told us that over the, now over the years. Obviously, they didn't tell us that then, but but now that we know them, they they said this. It's it's more uncommon, you know, which kind of floored us, but it's more uncommon that that uh, the person looking for the loan is has everything put together, if you will. Yeah, they people come in all unorganized asking yeah. for you know three or four hundred thousand dollars and they don't even have their act together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that that definitely helps. Absolutely. I would agree. That's how I grew mine too. Same yep. thing. You told us that, Leanne. Yeah. I know. I talked to that. Yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, that's what I, you know. I didn't have the proven profit formula coaching program when I met you, but you guys are my prodigies because <laughs> yeah. you know, through, through you, I learned what you needed. And that really became what I teach everybody today and yeah. why I'm a good coach. I have a gazillion stories and it's probably <laughs> happened to me or one of my students these yeah. different things and that yeah. helps because then you can solve it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I, you know, we've become real good friends over the years because of all these different deals that we did Yes. Yeah. and all the stories. Okay. Let's see here. Now I want to kind of get to, okay, now you got really great cash flow. Things are all in order, right? And that happened a couple of years ago. And now you, the tenants are paying down all this earlier stuff. The ones you bought 10 years ago, that got paid way yes. down. So then yep. tell us how you transitioned into some of this less, um, less you involved. You moved some of your money out of the everyday management and into still in real estate, but diversified. Yep. Say something about yep. that for us. Sure. Yeah. So, so, you know, when we were in buying mode a few years ago, if you remember, there's some fourplexes that came up on in Blaine uh, that we, that we liked, uh, but the prices were extremely high. So we kind of went back to the, to the, uh, <laughs> drawing to the drawing board. Yeah. And said, Hey, should we be buying or should we be selling? And uh, you know, obviously we decided to sell. <laughs> So then the next question was, okay, when we sell the money's, we're going to invest the money and we already knew it'd be real estate. Uh, so we kind of went through the path of saying, do we want to get into commercial? Do we want to buy bigger buildings? Uh, what do we want to do? And, and then we found these uh, Delaware statutory trusts or DSTs, which is essentially a syndication, but you can 1031 exchange into them. So we, we ended up selling some of the buildings, as you well know, and we 1031 into the syndications. And uh, uh, that now has put us in a position where the cash flow is strong. In fact, in some cases, a little, little bit stronger because there's more equity that we had to work with. Uh, but the best part is, is that we don't do anything. Right. So, yeah, we just sit back. You just get the statement in, in the mail or not even in the mail anymore. You can look any old time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So it's really nice. And some, and you were able to also go out of state with that. Yes. You didn't have to stay in the Twin Cities market. Exactly. So, and 1031 exchange for anybody listening, any profit they made over there, they just moved over to this new investment yep. without a bunch of tax burdens. Yeah. So yep. no, gains. no gains, capital gains tax. You right. did have to take your depreciation recapture though, right? Nope. Oh, everything, nothing. Everything, you just nothing. roll it over. <laughs> just roll it right on over. Yep. Okay. So I love that. So then I know you bought something in Memphis and they were just yep. in Memphis because remember they're in Nashville yep. right now for the Country Music Awards. So yep. um, you got to drive by this piece of property that you guys didn't have to go work on, but you have a stake right. here. Wasn't that yes. great? Yeah, it's yeah, brilliant. it's good to see, and it's nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's, look at those smiles, you guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I like this living on this not having to do the work part. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we still have buildings at home. No, yep. no I know. Completely <laughs> yeah, yeah, not 100. percent Not yet. You know, and what he's talking about too. That original two fourplexes was part of what we sold there. Those first buildings yep. and they did super well 
Yes. Yeah. Yep. They served yep. you well. That little limb you went on in the beginning paid off. Yep. It paid yep. off in the yep. end, definitely. That's scary limb. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's nice now because now we can we can diversify geographically. You know, there's obviously Memphis and, and we have some in Florida and whatnot. But then we could also we we diversified so we're not just in multifamily. So we have right. some multifamily, we have some commercial, you know, so it's it's a good mix now, if you will. And that's a smart, you know, Dean, that's a smart way to invest because all the eggs aren't in one basket now they're exactly. they're in the real estate sector but they're in different baskets yep. cool and isn't there something in medical too even yep. yeah yep. real estate medical though yep. yeah yep so we own the building and then there's a, a yeah actually clinic four, or, yeah, clinics yeah. that are inside the building clinics that rent from us mm -hmm. cool Yep. So what's the most valuable tip you're going to give people on here who would want to grow quick? Um, I, I think back to the velocity of money. I, I, I would, you know, don't, don't spend the profit. You know, it's, it's too easy to get the cash flow and then want to go buy you know, whatever, a boat, a toy, <laughs> whatever it may be. You know, uh, to us, you know, we said we knew that we wanted that money just to kind of go back into the next cash flowing asset. You know, so everything was about buying something that's going to pay us and, and not the other way around. Yeah, not like get a new house right then. Correct. Yep. Yeah. No. We're in the same house we've been for 23 years. Yeah. And we have no, no intention <laughs> on moving. It's just, it's, yeah, we look at it now and go, no way. If we're going to put money into something, I, I don't want to spend money where I have you know, every month we're putting money out. I'd rather go spend money on something where they're giving us money monthly. The, and, you know, that it, that's the velocity of money. It's that cash flow coming in is how you that's what living off the passive income is. That yeah. is always coming now. You don't have to do anything you do in the ones you're still self-managing. But in yep. those others, you don't. You know, but that you're making, sense. you know, there's a reason you're still self-managing certain ones. They're easier. Yep. They're the, e yep. the yeah. easy ones. And, you know, when people are liquidating portfolios, I mean, I know this. I always sold the dog first, right? Yep. And then yep. you yeah. move up and you keep all the good best ones. So exactly. if I'm the realtor looking for someone, I love it when they've moved up the rung a little and they're getting to the good stuff, you know, yep. yeah. <laughs> and not the dog. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. And during this growth process, and I know you'd come home, you've been painting all night, you're tired three nights in a row and all that. What did you do to stay on top of your mindset? Not just like getting like, this is so hard. Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Some days was hard. I mean, yeah. Some days, some, if you're rehabbing and you're going at it hard for a long period of time, I don't know. I guess we just always looked forward. We always had a vacation planned. Yeah. So that helps. So that you was, know, you okay. just had that end goal. Yeah. 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 Before we get to Mexico or whatever exactly. it is. Yeah, yeah. it's always yeah. that end goal. You always have to do that and celebrate the small yeah. accomplishments. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're, you know, when I first met you at that coffee shop, I remember your goal was to live off the passive income. And yep. here we are, you yep. know, you're yeah. doing it. And incidentally, yep. just so people know, Dean, when did you retire from your job? Uh, a year and two months. So last September. Wow. So, yep. see, okay, you got your first year under your belt of actually being retired from your nine to five. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was our goal. Get him out of work. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's nice. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now if we're gone somewhere and we want to stay for a few more days, we stay for a few more days. That is so cool. Yeah. Okay. Folks, I know I did a darn good job with my questions. Okay. <laughs> and that's why nobody asks anything. Cause I'm, I, I really have, you know, the questions they want. But if you have a question, type it in the box. Oh, Eric did ask something. Yeah. He says, what would you do different if you could go back to the beginning? Start sooner. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. a good 
Yeah. yeah. Start, Start sooner. sooner. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah that would definitely be the big thing. Oh, okay. Tim has a question. What are you doing for health insurance? Like now that you're retired now, is that a kind of an issue? Uh, yeah, but you know, we knew so part of our, again, you run the numbers. So we ran numbers on our own life, just like we do with buildings saying, okay, how much are we going to spend and how much do we need to make health insurance is part of it. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have that's health insurance. <laughs> yeah, it's an expense. Until you know, you guys, it'll get cheaper when you get over 65. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it's no Medicare for us. Uh, so yeah, we just buy the health insurance right through Minnesota. So you care is what we're currently in. Um, and it, it's it, just one of the expenses. I love what you yeah. said because you're right. Your life is no different than a building. You know, yeah. in, when you look at it from the numbers perspective, yeah. yep. everything is numbers with us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. I've been meeting with my financial planner because I am past the Medicare, you know, like I'm on it, right? Yep. But I've been meeting to say, okay, what's it going to take me now to live the rest of my life, you know, here, where, where, where are we at here and running through a bunch of models and yep. it's way less than I had in my head. And that's yep. what I love about numbers. In our head, we make up stuff. When it's yes. on the spreadsheet, we can start to work with reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So before we decided to retire, if you will, from the nine to five, we we did research on what would it cost for insurance? You know, what what expenses would we have that we don't today, you know, when, you know, leaving the nine to five, if you will. So those benefits go away, you know, and, and what is it going to look like? What are we going to do as we continue? And, and, you know, part of it was a, we want to travel more, of course, that was always the game plan. And so that cost money. That cost yeah. money. Yep. So we added that in and, you know, the health insurance added that in, you know, and we don't want to stop investing. So even that was added in saying, okay, we got to make sure that we're still building. That's still part of our budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything, it's all budgeted. We go through and put that in monthly or yeah. quarterly, whatever. Also, and yeah. because you do manage some of them, there's some tax advantages there, you know, yes. because yep. you are tax. participating in the ones you do have. Yep. Yep. So that helps with the passive income side. Um, and now we still run that. We don't uh, uh, because of taxes, we'd rather run them as passive income. So we're not active oh. you know, in property management, if you will. Right, because otherwise we got to start paying ourselves, you know, whatever, you know, taxes and all that fun stuff. But but um, so we still keep that passive. But the idea with with the buildings that we're still managing is that it's still sweat equity, right? So that money is stuff that we can still turn into other investments. Absolutely, you could sell right. some. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we do have a question. What are they saying? Can I ask? Are you supplementing your income with early four hundred one k withdrawals? Or are you living? No, you don't have to. They got enough yeah. cash flow from the portfolio. That yeah. was the goal, right? No, you don't want to yeah. take anything. Yeah, right. putting yeah. in. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, the four hundred one ks. I mean, we stopped putting money into that. You know, just because there's no. I mean, at this point, it doesn't make sense. But but we're still investing money, so we're still putting money where into real estate and things like that. You know, but again, the idea was, you know, with this budget in, as Renee said, is we know what it is that we spend and we know what we're going to do on a quarterly basis and follow the formula. Yeah. And so it, this is why I really wanted to interview them too, folks, because they really are living off the passive income and even having enough to travel and whatever. It's not like skating by barely. They're living right. off of it, like we showed in our original picture on the beach. Yes. If you have yeah. it. You know, I see one more question here. Uh, given the current cost, borrow and property values that are high, yep, are cash flowing properties out there? This is Leanne, the realtor. Absolutely. They're always there. And, you know, with the market being the way it is, like I um, actually Eric and I did a live about an hour and a half ago. And we talked about that exactly live on Facebook on Leah uh, on the real estate investing made simple site, I believe. 
Um, anyway, um, yes, they're out there and you're seeing seller concessions now, seller financing, CDs, they're out there more than you think, but you got to know people who understand deal structuring or the right realtors who are in the investment arena. Yes. Um, so, and some people do buy break even, but only in a, you know, um, not really. Most people, like I still, I believe just as Dean, cash flow. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. 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 You don't want to, anything to go wrong. I mean, then you're going to be paying more, you're going to be paying out of pocket just to keep things right. running. And we always had a, a number set in our mind or goal that we always wanted to, to make before yeah. we would yeah, offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, you had your formula and you followed it. Yep. Otherwise you don't, you make a lower offer or you don't buy it. Right. Yeah. Lisa wants to know any advice on how to find cash flowing deals. Um, did you have much success on the MLS? Did we buy most of them on the MLS? A lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them, but that was some, years yeah. Ago. A while ago. Remember our kid, we hit one on Thanksgiving time. Remember, Leanne? That oh yeah. Just like accident. nobody's looking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got it on thanks, like boom, went there and got it under contract the next morning before anybody could see it. Yeah. Because it was priced right. On the yeah. MLS, though, I think it's the, that that's, it was. Yeah. yeah. But I also remember you bought a triplex from somebody yeah. the handyman told you yep. about. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I worked I worked on him for a few years. <laughs> well, and you bought the building from the lady in Anoka. Yep. Mm -hmm. Somebody you knew. So, see, I would say yes, off market deals, some brought by me, the realtor, and some they even found from culturing relationships. That's what it's about. Yeah. The networking, the talking with people, going to different groups. And Leanne always was, Leanne was on every deal we ever did. Yep. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I just so appreciate you taking the time to really share this because it's possible, everybody, and doesn't take that long. We got proof right here. Yeah. And when you first bought, it wasn't 3% interest, you know, no, no. 10 no. years ago. I mean, no. so the rates are what the rates are. It's all about if it cash flows with the rates. Yeah. And right. And with the rents right now, it, they should still be working. I mean, it still should, yeah. numbers should still be working. They do. And, you know, I bought real estate when the interest rates were 18%, folks. And yeah. again, back to the cash flow formula, it didn't matter. Yeah. As long as you, you know, those tenants were paying down those buildings. Same thing, the value add really makes it go faster. Yeah. If you yes. wouldn't have done that, it would take yeah. a lot longer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you go in with the, what do they call? Yeah, turnkey. Turnkeys are a little harder to get numbers yeah. to work. But if yeah. you're willing to put in the work, do some paint, do some cleanup, it's, it works. Yep. Yep. Okay, so let's see. Here I got left. I want to tell you a couple things. I'm going to share screen real quick. Here we go. Um, if you'd like to have a free strategy session with me, this is how it all starts. Just like that original meeting with them, mm -hmm. just go over to leannereilly.com and it's on there, buy, sell, invest under the realty thingy. Or if you're interested in coaching or mentoring, then you go over there and you look under the coaching tab. I do both. 